So I started this hobby in growing plants uh, during the pandemic. So I just graduated from university and I had a lot of time before work started. So I wanted to look for things to do around the house. You know, during that period of time, we were all looking to improve our homes. So I chanced upon this video of this couple doing a vertical wall and I thought that would be a pretty cool idea. So I set out my journey, I built a vertical wall and after that I was looking for more plants to beautify my home and I turned to Carousel. And on Carousel I chanced upon these uh, so-called rare plants where they were going for $30 to $40, $50 even. And um, when I built the vertical wall, the average price of the plants was like $2 to $4. So I was a bit curious as to like why these plants were so expensive and something I realised uh, of on this carousel plants is that um, the foliage was very nice so the leaves were very interesting it's not something you see in your common nurseries and I had a conversation with the carousel seller he was very friendly uh, so he started telling me more about the plants that he collected and stuff like that and uh, eventually I got uh, my first few plants from him after a while, um, after collecting these plants, I realised that um, I could grow them rather well and I was very intrigued um, by their foliage and the patterns on the leaves. So I started to collect more and more and eventually um, I found myself having 50 plants in my bedroom uh, after a good few weeks. <laughs> Yeah, so that was quite an interesting experience. So growing plants during the pandemic was, I think, a rather interesting phenomenon in Singapore or actually um, worldwide because um, there was an influx of many new hobbyists like myself. And it was quite an interesting period because we were all connected via social media. So um, on Plantstagram, you connect with so many new growers in Singapore and then you very quickly form a community so the community in Singapore is built of uh, the old guards who have been gardening for a long time and then also many new growers like myself. So we would spend our weekends visiting various nurseries, looking for new plants. And I think it was a bit like, um, it was quite fun because it was like collecting Pokemon cards. So every week you would see this new uh, plant on Instagram and then everyone would be like, oh, what plant is this? Um, how do we take care of it? Um, where can we find it? And then we would then um, embark on our little adventures during the weekend to all the di all the various nurseries and uh, it was quite fun. I was like um, going on quests every weekend and then acquiring the plant and then learning how to take care of it and then growing it. So in terms of um, my favourite species of plants or my favourite plant in general, um, as my name suggests, uh, Marcus on Aeroids is actually a word play on how I collected aeroids and uh, it felt like I was on steroids because I was collecting so many plants at the same time that's why it's Marcus on aeroids um, so I guess at the start my my focus was on aeroids I like the green foliage and I like the fact that you can grow these plants um, with really big leaves and that was what captivated me so I think over time uh, I started to collect other things that just attracted me. So I started collecting like some picture plants, some interesting trees that I liked, and pretty much everything that um, is interesting to me, I'll try to collect it. Oh, platyserums were, uh, were, were also a new thing that I started collecting. So I think pretty much anything that um, captivates me, I'll try to uh, collect them in a bit first and then try to understand how to grow them and then when I'm confident I started to collect more and more of it. So this is actually a propagation of a propagation of a propagation over the years of the very first plant that I collected. It is a philodendron uh, gloriosum. So you can see the leaves are very velvety, the veins are quite white and nice. So this was actually the first plant that actually captivated me. La. And it was slightly bigger when I first got it. Um, and I was just so enchanted by the leaf. Yeah, so this was actually the, the plant that kick-started my journey. So I think when I first started out the hobby, um, naturally you have a space to fill, right? And with a space to fill, you will try to think, oh, what can I buy next to fill that space? And eventually when you have, a, when you have a, like an entire desk to fill, you will try to collect like 10 different species or 10 different types of plants. And so at the start, it was more of like, oh, collecting and collecting and collecting without really um, thinking if um, that is something you really, really like. Um, so over time, 
it shifted away from just collecting to really collecting things that I enjoyed growing. Um, and I think that is where uh, I am at now in this hobby. Just collecting things that, you know, like Marie Kondo said, um, sparks joy in you. So when I first started collecting plants, um, I st just like most hobbies, I think we start in our bedrooms because we don't want to infringe on other spaces. So um, I started to put like 10 plants in my room. Then I started to add grow lights to help them grow because um, sometimes it's not bright enough. And then after that, from 10 plants, it grew to 20 plants. And then I think I stopped at about 60 plants. And it reached a point where my room was just so humid at night and I couldn't really breathe. <laughs> Yeah, so I ended up sleeping in like my brother's room or the living room and then I think at that point in time it, it occurred to me, wow Marcus, I think you are quite serious in this hobby already lah. and I think when you go to the different nurseries during this period of time you would get inspiration like Little Botany, Terrascapes um, you would see like, oh actually it's possible to create a structure here so I decided, okay, maybe it's time to um, experiment with that so I spoke to my parents and I was like, okay, let's try to build something. Um, I'll be in charge of this project. And over time, they were like, okay, I think you are quite interested in this hobby. Uh, we give you our, our, our blessings, so go ahead. And then I contacted a few friends of mine, uh, Raymond from Raymond's Alcove, and then he helped me to build the uh, first part of the structure. Okay, hi guys. Uh, welcome to my garden. So this is the place where I spend most of my time at home. Um, I think it started off uh, with this half where I was just venturing into expanding the garden into like a um, outdoor aeroid house kind of growing place and then over time after um, gaining confidence I built this half and then in the last one year or so I started to expand um, the plants outwards and now it's taken over the whole driveway with this whole portion. So this is like a very nice green uh, greeting whenever I come home every day. So I think in terms of how I arrange my plants, uh, generally this whole area is shaded. So I tried to play the layers. Um, that's why I started to hang baskets um, to put the plants. Um, and, I, and over time I realized actually this creates sort of like a vertical wall kind of uh, effect. And I think it's very beautiful when you play with like different levels and then you start to hang plants uh, to just create an overall nice uh, green look. In terms of the plants I collect, I think I started mostly with aeroids. So I have the, you have your philodendrons, your anthuriums, and you also have your alocasias. Um, but over time, I just started collecting different things that you know sparked joy in me. This is quite a special plant. It's called the. Uh, it's a very common tree. It's called the Pachara aquatica, seen in a lot of cafes. So. Um, as the name suggests, um, for cafes, I met my girlfriend um, under a Pachara Aquatica. So I thought it would be quite nice to have this plant because it just reminds me of our first date. So I try my best to collect um, nice green plants. Like this one, you can see it started off um, pretty small. And then over time, we have such a huge big leaf. So I think that really sparks a lot of joy because I try to grow the plants well. Um, even if it's a common plant, I try to maximize its growth and really see and bring out the full potential in them. I think when you are starting out um, on an area in your home, I think most of us are constrained to what we already have. So I think some of the things that we need to pay attention to will be sunlight. Let's say your, face, your window is facing the east, you have a lot of morning sun and sometimes in the late morning you get very hot sun so you probably need to get your shade cloths ready. Likewise in the west you get very strong afternoon sun so probably best to have a shade net. Um, when you're going outdoors, um, you naturally have um, most of the day sun. Um, especially the afternoon and the noontime sun which can be very hot. So in terms of uh, understanding the light, it's very important to make sure that um, your plants, which are mostly epiphytes, uh, have a good amount of shading. A lot of the plants that we grow are actually um, climbing plants. So they're epiphytes and they grow in the, in the wild, they grow on the trees to get the lighting and the support they need. So. This was a common idea back in 2020 where everyone was making moss poles. So I decided to make my own moss poles um, 
in a more uniform way and found a way to secure the moss poles to the pot so that the plant can really grow quite well. So naturally when you have climbing plants and they grow on moss poles or any pole in, in that aspect, um, you will maximize its growth and then they naturally grow quite big. So this is an example of how um, one of my plants uh, have been, has been growing. So this is the uh, Philodendron patriciae, which is a really nice plant with really nice foliage. And as you can see, it really has put on a lot of size after putting it on the, on the, on the right growing conditions. Lah. So I think in terms of um, putting plants on moss poles, um, you are actually maximizing your space because in the wild, if these plants cannot find a tree, they will end up sending um, a long runner to look for something to climb on. So this is a good example actually. Um, if you take a look here, you can see that the leaves are actually quite close by. But as soon as it ran out of space to climb, it started to shoot smaller leaves and the um, internodal space is a bit longer. So if you have a moss pole, the internodal space will be a lot shorter. Um, and also your plants can actually uh, get bigger quicker. So that is um, one good reason why you should use uh, a climbing support if you have a climbing plant. So when I was designing the uh, plot in my house, it's a really relatively thin strip of uh, land. So it's about 2 meters by 10 meters. So I was thinking what is the best uh, efficient use of the space um, while being able to put more plants in it, the most amount of plants in it. So I started out with uh, multiple racking systems because my plants were relatively small at that point in time. But over time as they grow, you tend to realize, okay, maybe lesser racks would do because your plants can really outgrow um, the space really quickly. So I think it's always like playing with ideas, experimenting, and then trying to understand uh, what is the best for you. So this is the original Aeroid house um, where you have the more temperamental plants like uh, anthuriums. So over here, it's slightly more shaded. Um, there's a misting system that keeps the uh, plants nice and wet and humid. Um, and my misters go off about two to three hours, every two to three hours. So over here, I try to put like propagations. I also put uh, anthuriums and begonias as well. Begonias are very finicky. So I put my begonias here as well. When I first um, built this place, most of my rackings were just this two tier system. Uh, but I realized I didn't really have, um, I have a lot of underutilized space underneath the racks. So I shifted towards um, this structure, this um, metal cabinet kind of thing, metal shelving system um, that can help you to put like a few layers. And it's very easy because you can adjust the height of the racks. So at first I started off with about four levels, then eventually for the three racks at the back, I moved towards just three tiers because the plants, um, I think about 60 to 80 cm is a good height for most plants. Yeah, in terms of uh, how this place is built, um, I have two layers of uh, shading. So I have a shade cloth as well as a like a PVC sheet over it. And then in terms of the misting system, um, as you can see, it's just a basic um, misting system that you have that surrounds the fans and then it shoots misters out and then the fan blows it so that it cools the area so you can just buy it off uh, Shopee it's not very expensive and then you just uh, DIY it yourself it doesn't really uh, water the plant through so take note of that um, but it gives the area a good level of wetness so that it is nice and humid so I think um, in terms of other considerations um, with regards to the conditions of the plot, you also need, um, or generally in growing plants at home, you generally need a lot of good airflow. Um, but it's always a delicate balance because these plants require quite a bit of humidity as well. Uh, Singapore is already very humid, but a lot of these plants require constant humidity. So in the day when you have two to three hour blocks where there's a lot of wind, and there's a lot of um, dryness in the air. That is the period of times I feel that will really affect the plant's growth. I try to keep the humidity constant by misting the plants um, every one to two hours so that there is some wetness in the area. Um, and I'm pretty lucky because I keep the uh, two sides of my plot open so the wind blows through to dry the leaves during this one to two hour periods. Okay, so as you can see in the inner side, 
Um, the whole place is actually roofed with a PVC sheet. Uh, this is because I do not want uh, the rain to come in. Uh, because at the start, I wanted a little bit more control of the growing environment. So if I want it to be moist um, and humid, I would on the misters. And I didn't want to, the rain to affect uh, the growing conditions. Um, so over time, I realized okay, I was a bit more confident in how I could grow my plants. So I just, uh, for the rest of the structure, there is no roofing. So I let the rain water my plants. And then on days where it's really hot, um, I'll manually wet the plants or put some misting systems there as well. So what is the difference between growing your plants um, at home in indoors versus growing it in a plot-like setting? I think first of all, uh, growing in a plot is like playing the game at level one is the easiest mode you can do it because you have all the ideal conditions for you and you don't really have to do much. I think the one biggest difference is watering. Watering, um, when I was growing my plants back in my room was such a headache because you had to uh, move one by one, move all your plants one by one to the toilet, then you water them. And then it sort of like takes the joy out of gardening because it becomes more of a chore. So I think that is the biggest difference for me, like being able to walk around with a hose and just washing all the plants and then watering them. Yeah, but I always respect people who grow their plants at home in an indoor setting very well because that is like playing the game at a very high level, a very hard difficulty level. And um, people who grow their plants at home really well, I think that's very admirable. So I think uh, one stark difference that I saw after moving my plants uh, from my room to the plot was that um, they really supersized in terms of growth. I think that was mainly because of the amount of sunlight they were getting. Um, in terms of pests, um, naturally when you go outdoors, I started to realize that wow, actually when you grow plants outdoors, right, there are a lot of different kind of pests, not just your spider bugs, uh, spider mites or your mealy bugs, but you get everything. So you get like caterpillars coming from moths and butterflies and you get grasshoppers and I think the, the most headache one would be snails. So I get a lot of garden snails during the wet seasons of the year. Yeah, so growing plants outdoors do have its benefits, but they also come with um, a lot of pests, yeah. So generally, I try not to use too much chemicals when I um, do pest management. Um, every week, I would try to just wash the leaves. So I would use my hose, or you can use your shower head as well in the toilet. Um, don't worry about it being too strong, so just give it a good wash underneath, and give it a good wash on top. And I think you're pretty much good to go after that. So just do it for all your plants. Um, but when you have certain pests like trips, um, you can start to spot the sign. So um, trips like plants, trips attack all plants, but they're most um, apparent in plants with thinner leaves. And somehow they also like the longer leaf, like the pendant leaf kind of plants. So you can start to see like the leaf um, unfurling, having difficulty unfurling. And then a common sign is you'll start to see like a line here um, or some sort of like uh, damage in the leaves. That's when you know you have trips um, or you can also Google it uh, for different signs and symptoms. Um, for trips, I generally use something a little bit more potent. Um, I use uh, abermectin. So abermectin is quite good. If you have trips, try to use it maybe for a consistent period of every two to three days for a period of about three weeks lah, so that you can kill the trips in their different stages of the life cycle. So that would be quite effective. Um, I've tried neem oil as well and other things. I think most of the things work, uh, but you just have to be consistent. Um, when you identify the problem, try to eradicate it within a one month time frame, and you just keep attacking it during that period. Okay, so in terms of my plant care routine, I try to keep it as simple as possible. I try to dedicate a whole uh, half of one of the weekends to really just pruning the leaves, um, checking up on the, on the plant health, and just making sure that the plants are all right. So in terms of my plant care routine, these are my three staples. Um, one is a slow release from Sao Lane. Um, this one has a lot of nitrogen in it, so it's 27, 9, 13. Um, and I put it on all my plants so that when the water touches it, it dissolves and then it releases the nutrients for the plants on a constant basis. Um, for the roots, I use Rootroids. I think it's the, really a really good brand. Uh, it's premium as well. And it, it really, one bag like that, like that can last you probably about two to three years. I haven't, I think I've bought this bag 
since the start of my journey and I haven't used it, uh, haven't used finish yet. And then lastly, um, a liquid fur to give you that immediate um, boost um, is the foliage focus. So in terms of frequency, I use this on a monthly basis and I replenish it when I can't see the yellow pellets in the pots anymore. Um, for root roids and foliage focus, I alternate it every two weeks in my watering. So I'll put it in the watering, water into the plants, um, and then switch it up uh, every alternate two weeks. So like I mentioned, I really like to collect plants because of their interesting uh, foliage. So this is an Enturium luxuriance. You can see that there's really nice bulleted and dark leaves. So it's really interesting and well, very nice to add to your collection. <laughs> yeah. So look at that, so nice. And um, in terms of uh, other plants um, that have very interesting foliage, this is the uh, Enturium vhei. You can see the leaves are very, very special. Like you have this nice texture that really adds like a nice pop to your collection. Yeah. In terms of like where to put your plants in your environment, I think it's always an experiment. Um, naturally, for uh, different types of plants, I try to play around with um, where I think it's the best location for it in terms of how much light it receives, how much humidity it receives and whether it is a bit more resilient than other plants. So I think in general, philodendrons, um, they tend to be able to take a little bit more sun while anthuriums, um, probably a little bit more finicky because when, it's, when there's too much sun, sometimes it can be a bit dry in that area. So I give it a little bit more shade um, not so much light, a little bit more humidity, constant humidity. I think that's the most important thing. Um, but it's always like you put your plant there, um, monitor it, see whether it does well. If it doesn't do well, me, uh, most of the time it's probably the environment or the pest situation. So just change it up, um, put it here, put it there, and then see whether it works for your plant. So I mentioned I like to grow plants um, from small to big to really see the full length of the growth. Uh, I actually got this uh, Enturium regal from a friend during Christmas. It was this big, but now it's... Oh, let me see if I can try to shift it. Okay. Yeah, so now this is the size of the uh, Enturium regal. Really nice plant. Really nice, really nice leaves, yeah. One of my favorite grows, yeah, very rewarding. So you can see how when you're able to grow um, even common plants to such big sizes, then you like, it's really rewarding. La. So for this plant, it took me about two years to go from around this size to here. Um, in terms of anthuriums, uh, sometimes growing anthuriums can be, can be a bit daunting because we always hear that they need higher humidity. Um, but in my opinion, and experience, um, the Magnificums, Crystallaniums and the heart-shaped ones, they are a little bit more forgiving. So you can always start with these before moving to the, uh, the difficult ones like the Enturium Moroquianums and Enturium VHEIs. Okay, so this is actually my final expansion. Uh, it was a little pet project because I wanted to create like a vertical wall of sorts. Uh, but then I actually gave up on this project and recently um, there was a uh, pickup in interest in platycerums so I also, shift, I also started collecting platycerums and I realized that this was actually a perfect and ideal spot for them because they get a lot of sunlight and I have a lot of uh, vertical space to really just um, hang them on the wall. Learning how to grow them was a whole new ball game because of the watering, um, how to mount the, the platycerums. Yeah, so this one is, this is actually um, one of my first few platycerums. Um, so you can see that the shield has formed nicely already and the fawn is out, the fertile fawn is out. So yeah, this one is one of my favorite. Um, I actually bought it as a pair and then I mounted it up on my, on my own. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I guess it turned out quite okay lah. You see the fawns, uh, the shields are quite nice. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a very rewarding grow. Um, they do take a lot more time as compared to your other plants like your aeroids. In terms of your mixes, I like to keep it simple. Um, ultimately, your mix will determine your plant care routine and your watering routine. So for me, 
Um, I generally use just three basic components. I use orchid bark, uh, perlite as well as pumice. So it's a very drainy mix. It uh, means that the more drainy it is, the more you can water your plant. Um, if you add water retentive media like cocoa peat or um, worm castings, they will naturally hold a bit more water so that you can water your plants a bit lesser. So if we take a look now, I just take a hose. Um, if you water it, you can see that the water comes out very quickly. So likewise, um, it means that it is very uh, non-water retentive and very drainy. So your water can just come out like that. Yeah. So if you play around with it, it also shows you how much you need to water it. And I think there are many rules out there on how you can water your plants. Um, but just stick to something that is convenient for you. So if you only have time to water your plants once a week, generally I would advise to put a little bit more cocoa peat into your mix so that it stays wet for a longer time. Um, if you like to tinker and touch your plants a lot, a drainy mix is good because you can water it more and there is uh, lesser room for mistakes, except for when you forget to water your plants. Something I would tell myself um, if I could turn back the clock, you know, to advise myself would be uh, to take it slow. Because um, I think at the start when we are collecting plants, we're always um, in a race or like in a, in a rush to collect everything. So I would say, um, I would tell myself, Marcus, um, take your time, enjoy the growing process, collect plants that you really enjoy. Um, it's okay if you collect plants that you don't really like, um, but because you get to learn how to grow them. But take your time, enjoy it, um, watch them grow up, uh, understand how they grow and then you uh, get more and more. The biggest advice, take it slow, enjoy the process and just have fun.